Magandang araw sa inyong lahat. Good day to all. I am Dr. Carmencita Padilla, one of the proponents of the newborn screening program in the Philippines. Join me in uncovering the wonderful story of newborn screening in our country. Together, let's zoom in on what makes NBS a comprehensive program for every Filipino here at Newborn Screening in Focus. In this second season, join us again as we dive deep into the systems of the Philippine Newborn Screening. Study the partner organizations and their role in making NBS an outstanding program. And in detail again, discuss some congenital disorders from our eNBS panel of disorders. So without further ado, take a seat, get comfortable as you're in for quite an adventure here at Newborn Screening in Focus. Welcome to the 22nd episode of Newborn Screening in Focus, Season 2, where we will talk about other possible complications of galactosemia. Galactosemia is a group of disorders of galactose metabolism that can result in life-threatening complications if left untreated. Newborn screening has made it possible to detect and manage this disorder in a timely manner. However, even with early diagnosis and treatment, long-term problems from galactosemia might still arise. Thus, regular monitoring and evaluation are necessary. We encourage you to go back to episode 18 where we discuss the pathophysiology of galactosemia, its clinical manifestations, and we had an overview of the management for one of galactosemia's most well-known effects, cataracts and visual impairment. Our guest then, clinical geneticist Dr. Bon Maceta and ophthalmologist James Lee, talked about how galactosemia is treated, which included dietary recommendations, as well as they discuss the long-term ophthalmologic complications like the cataracts. To talk about liver failure and other complications uh, in galactosemia, we are joined by Dr. Novet Regina Lagunzat, a pediatric gastroenterologist with expertise in hepatology and nutrition. Also joining us today is Dr. Michelle Abadingo, a metabolic specialist and a member of the panel of experts on metabolic disorders. Welcome to the program as panelists. Good day, Dr. Menchit. Good day, Dr. Mitch, and to our viewers. Um, good day, Dr. Menchit and Dr. Novet, and to our viewers. Um, good day to everyone, and it's nice to be back here in Newborn Screening in Focus. So let's dive into the topic, and I hope that our viewers watched episode 18. So this is going to be part two of galactosemia. So Dr. Mitch, maybe you can give us a recap of what galactosemia is. Okay, as a recap, um, as discussed in episode um, 18, um, galactosemia is an inborn error of carbohydrate metabolism. So um, ito pong galactose natin ay um, isang carbohydrate po na nanggagaling doon sa breakdown naman po ng carbohydrate na tawag ay lacto uh, lactose. Ito naman pong lactose ay galing sa ating um, dairy product um gatas po um etc so ang nangyayari po sa galactosemia ay meron pong um absent or kulang na um enzyme na tinatawag po natin ano po or chemical scissor um ito pong enzyme or chemical scissor scissor na ito ay pinapasimple po ang galactose para ito po ay magamit ng ating katawan um, bilang source po ng energy ang nangyayari dahil po wala or kulang itong um 
enzyme na ito, naiipon po itong um, galactose natin at yung mga tinatawag po natin na metabolites. At um, ito po ang nagdudulot ng mga um, signs and symptoms po ng galactosemia. So napakaganda ng pagpapaliwanag ni Dr. Mitch, no? May kulang na enzyme that acts like a scissor. So can you give us some of the the usual complications of galactosemia. Uh, yes po, Dr. Ramenshit. So, um, as discussed in the previous episode, um, isa doon sa mga complication ay yung cataracts um, ophthalmologic. Um, sa mga pag-aaral, uh, maaari ding magkaroon ng um, uh, neurologic complications, um, developmental complications, um, hepatocellular complications, uh, meron din po sa mga ibang pag-aaral na um, sa uh, renal, renal tubular complications din po of galactosemia. So thank you Dr. Mitch, no? talagang napakadami palang complications ng galactosemia. And uh, last time we talked about cataracts and today we have a guest who's going to talk about the liver complications. But before I go to the liver complications, I'd like Dr. Novet to tell us Ano ba ang hepatology? Because you were introduced as a hepatologist. Um, uh, good day to everyone again. So, ang hepatology po ay ang pag-aaral po ng uh, liver disease po. Since I'm a pediatrician, it's the study of liver disease in children. Actually, um, I'm a pediatric gastroenterologist and part of our training is in hepatology. So, we deal with children with liver diseases po. Before we start discussing your role in the treatment of patients with galactosemia. Can you explain to the group, what does a hepatologist do? Kailan ba kami nagre-refer sa pediatric hematologist? Ano pa ang spread ng conditions na inaalagaan nito? Okay. So, ang hepatology po is the study of uh, liver disease. Since I'm a pediatrician, it's the study of liver disease in children. So, ang hepatology, malawak po ang scope nito. No? May sakit po ng pagkabata, baby pa lang. May sakit naman din po pagkatanda. So, ang galactosemia po ay isa sa mga sakit na uh, nare-refer din po sa amin as uh, pediatric gastroenterologist with uh, training in hepatology. Okay. So, Dr. Novet, when is a patient referred to you? When is a patient with galactosemia referred to a hepatologist? Okay. So, ang, hepat ang galactosemia po kasi ay uh, meron pong accumulation of lac galactose in the blood. So, when the galactose is accumulated in the liver, it causes symptoms. So, ang mga liver symptoms na usual na nakikita natin, especially in infants, would be paninilaw or jaundice. Jaundice yun ng balat or ng eyes. And then, paglaki po ng atay or hepatomegaly. So, this will be manifested as parang may abdominal distension. And then, yung mga later symptoms po, for example, may portal hypertension, uh, progressive increase po ng ating liver and spleen, and then may mga complications po, uh, like for example, encephalopathy, na apektuhan na po ang brain, or for example, nagkakaroon sila ng varices sa kanilang esophagus and then they vomit out blood. Uh, pero Dr. Novet, yung lahat ng binanggit mo kasi complications na ito ah, yes, ng po. poor treatment. No? Yes. So ibabalik ko lang kay Dr. Mitch. Um, let's go back to the treatment of galactosemia and then how do we avoid these complications? Okay. Para po sa galactosemia, um, nabanggit po natin kanina ang uh, yung galactose ay nanggagaling po sa breakdown ng ating tinatawag na lactose. So, uh, para sa mga sanggol or sa ating mga babies, ito po ay ating absolute contraindication po uh, sa breastfeeding. So, uh, sa ating mga sanggol, binibigyan po natin sila ng um, soy-based formula. Uh, habang lumalaki naman po yung mga bata, uh, meron tayong mga... Um, uh, dietitian na on board po um, sa ating mga continuity clinics at uh, tumutulong po sila uh, sa mga uh, binibigyan nila ng listahan po uh, ng pagkain um, itong ating mga pasyente may galactosemia at kung ano po yung mga um, kailangan nilang iwasan. So tinuturuan po yung mga magulang na babasahin po yung um, nutrition facts um, sa mga pagkain. So may mga listahan po ng mga pagkain na hindi pwede um, para sa mga um, uh, bata or mga um, individual na may galactosemia. So tama ba ang sinasabi mo, Dr. Mitch, na kapag ang baby ay na-pick up na positive for galactosemia, immediately kailan soy formula talaga binibigay natin? Yes po, Dr. Okay. Mitch. At pag hindi natin nagawa yun, 
at doon tayo nagkakaroon ng complications. Okay. Okay. Siguro bago natin tingnan kung paano ang pag-manage ng complications, ilan na pang pasyente natin may galactosemia sa Pilipinas? Okay. Sa ngayon po, um, sa data po ng Newborn Screening Reference Center, ang uh, prevalence po or uh, dami ng pasyente na may galactosemia ay uh, around 1 in 200,000 po, Dr. Ah, Ramesh. Marami rin pala, no? Kasi parang sinasabi natin, hindi natin talaga makikita sa anyo, no? Ito kasi, tandaan nyo, di ba, paulit-ulit natin sinasabi na lahat ng babies kailangan gawa ng screening kasi wala kang makikita sa mukha, wala kang makikita talagang simptomas, makukuha lang talaga siya sa blood test. Okay? At lahat itong mga batang ito ay nakasoy formula at pinafollow up sa ating continuity clinic. Yes po, Dr. Ramenship. Um, as soon as ma-confirm po ang diagnosis ng galactosemia ay um, pinapalitan na po yung gatas uh, nitong ating mga pasyente into a soy-based formula. Um, ito pong soy-based formula na ito ay uh, readily available po sa ating mga drugstores uh, and uh, supermarkets. Okay. So pumapasok naman yung ating nutritionist kapag nagkaroon na ng supplementary feeding kasi kailangan na naman bantayan kung anong content ang kanilang pagkain. So ngayon, aking susunod na tanong ay, ilan na ba sa ating mga pasyente ang nangailangan ng tulong ng isang hepatologist? Um, actually, Dr. Menchit, meron akong naging um, personal experience po na um, na-refer namin yung pasyente um, sa isang um, hepatologist po. So ang nangyari po kasi dito sa kasong ito, Um, ang nanay ng pasyente ay kailangan magtrabaho um, sa ibang lugar. Uh, hindi niya nabanggit doon sa magbabantay sa kanyang anak na kinakailangan na ang gatas ng kanyang anak ay itong soy-based formula lamang. So um, dahil hindi alam ito nung nag-alaga nung bata, ay bumili lang nung available na uh, milk formula sa um, grocery. So ang nangyari, um, itong pasyente na ito ay dinala sa emergency room na... Um, may mga sintomas na nabanggit ni Doktora Novet kanina. So, naninilaw po yung bata, um, malaki yung chan, nakakapa ang atay, madilaw din yung mata, at um, meron din pong um, katarata na. So, uh, yun po, naging um, na-refer po sa isang um, hepatologist itong pasyenteng ito po. Ilan taon tong baby to nung nakuha mo siya, Dr. Uh, itong uh, baby po na ito ay may isang taon po, kung hindi po ako nagkakamali. At ilang taon na siya nung inaalagaan ng kanyang uh, caregiver? Um, ano po, Doktora Menchit, bago lang po na, ina na inalagaan itong batang ito dahil um, kinailangan pong magtrabaho ng um, nanay sa ibang lugar, uh, hindi po um, nabanggit ng nanay na kinakailangan, na stricto tayo na um, soy-based formula ang kailangan gamitin. So ang malinaw dito ay ang pag-aalaga ng isang batang may galactosemia ay hindi lamang para sa ina, kundi sa lahat ng kasama sa bahay. Kaya ngayon ang aking tanong kay, kay Dr. Novet, how early do you see these symptoms, no? Uh, itong mga binanggit na complications, mga symptoms pa lang, no? Symptoms sa binanggit na paninila, paglaki ng atay. How soon do you find them from the time that they're exposed? Okay, so for liver manifestations of galactosemia, merong early, merong late. Yung early, actually, even before yung paglabas ng newborn screening, kasi aside from the jaundice, aside from the hepatomegaly, meron pa silang gastrointestinal complications that would cause uh, one to refer to a gastroenterologist. For example, diarrhea, vomiting, um, poor feeding, leading to failure to thrive. So within first six months of life, if not addressed or not corrected, pwede na po yung baby mag liver failure. So ganun po talaga kaaga ang uh, manifestations okay. po. Ang malinaw dito, sinasabi natin, ayaw natin makarating ng mayroong sintomas at ayaw natin makarating ng liver failure. Yes. Kaya ang sinasabi ay kung may newborn screening, dapat hindi nangyayari itong complications. Uh, natutuwa tayo ngayon kasi 90% ang coverage natin ngayon ng newborn screening. Meron pa rin tayong 10% na hindi naaabot at hindi natin alam kung isa doon ay merong galactosemia. So sabihin na nga natin nagkaroon siya ng uh, signs of complications and liver failure. Kung maibabalik natin siya sa tamang pagkain at gatas, marireverse ba natin ang kanyang symptoms, Dr. Novet? Actually, that's the good thing about yung correcting it promptly. Kasi um, in uh, several cases, no, 
pwedeng ma-reverse no as long as walang uh, pagka-peklat sa ata yung cirrhosis pwede siyang ma-reverse and with proper um, avoidance of lactose or galactose in the diet talagang significant po yung improvement hindi na po siya masyado nagpo-progress although i would like to uh, say here that the body is actually uh, have a capacity to produce uh, endogenous um, galactose also. So it means that it doesn't mean that if we corrected it already, na wala nang further damage. So kailangan talaga po, like uh, Dr. Mitch said, na close monitoring kasi meron pa pong mga uh, complications that can occur even after uh, correcting or treating. So, paano natin imamanage yon? Kung meron kang endogenous sources of galactosemia in the body, how do you make sure that it does not cause complications? So, for this, um, actually, kailangan mag-anticipate tayo what are the problems na, um, that we can encounter uh, in all stages of life. Or for example, in toddlers, school-age children, adolescent, kailangan i-anticipate and we refer to the proper specialist, not just gastroenterologist. And also, kailangan strict din talaga tayo sa pag-avoid. So, tulad nga ng sabi ni Dr. Mitch, na kailangan pati yung mga ingredients talagang tinitingnan natin ano yung mga ingredients para talagang um, minimize natin yung pag-expose uh, to galactose. Sige. So, sabi niyo yung dalawa, kung sakaling, kung sakaling mang nagkaroon na tayo ng signs and symptoms, Papalitan natin yung pagkain, ibabalik natin, pwedeng ma-reverse to a certain point. E kung dumating tayo sa point na hindi na siya talaga ma-reverse, anong gagawin natin, Dr. Novet? Okay. Um, in, our, in my standpoint, no, as a hepatologist, kung talagang um, may complications na sa liver and hindi na po nagko-compensate yung liver dahil sa peklat or cirrhosis, then we can do actually a liver transplant, no? For those infants na, for example, hindi talaga na manage early, they can result to acute liver failure, then prompt liver transplantation should be done. And then for those na uh, older, uh, when there is end-stage liver disease, eventually a liver transplant should also be done. Okay, so Dr. Novet, available ba ang liver transplant sa Pilipinas? Okay. So, fortunately, uh, meron naman tayong liver transplant here in the Philippines, no? Um, at the medical city, we've already performed uh, 13 pediatric liver transplant patients. Although, if you see, uh, look at the diagnosis, it's mostly due to yung mga biliary atresia, colidocal cyst, um, sclerosing cholangitis. Wala pa talaga yung... Uh, due to metabolic liver disease. Kasi yung metabolic liver disease talagang less than a year uh, of age kailangan ginagawa na yung transplant. So wala pa tayong experience in that. And also, we already have a program tie up between the medical city, um, one of our government hospital, PCMC, known as the PASLIT program. So it's currently ongoing. Um, and I think we have already transplanted two patients, and there's another one coming. Uh, pe pero ang, itong mga pasyenteng to ba, eh, anong edad? Itong sinasabi mong okay. uh, cases? Yes po. Actually, mga, ang pinaka-youngest is mga one to two years old. Okay. Hindi siya less than one year of age. Okay. And um, um, aside from those done here, actually majority go abroad then for a transplant. Okay, saan natin pinapadala ang mga pasyente? Okay. So, initially, uh, pinapadala siya ng ating hepatologist, si Dr. Gregorio sa, um, I think, sa Taiwan, meron sa Hong Kong, and then lately, pumupunta sila sa India. Okay. So, ang inaasahan natin that, that this will be, read, be readily available in the Philippines dahil covered siya ng PhilHealth, di ba? Uh, yes. Po. Um, actually, uh, there are other centers no, uh, also uh, in the works of uh, uh, making their own liver transplantation. So that's uh, in also in Philippine General Hospital and I think in Baguio General Hospital. Okay. So we're also working on it okay. right now. Bakit pa napakahirap iset up yung team? Can you also share with them pag sinabi nating 
gusto namin magkaroon ng liver transplant program dito sa ospital na, namin. Okay? Ano ba yung kailangan mabuo para okay. siya matupad? Del funding is no longer a problem. Mm -hmm. It's covered. So, mm -hmm. anong kulang pati hindi makakapag-set up ka okay. So, um, a liver transplant team um, usually consists of, of course, our surgeon. No? So, there's a team of surgeons doing the transplant not just on the patient, but also on the donor. Because in, um, in children, mostly live donor uh, liver transplant yung ginagawa natin. So marami yun, no? And aside from that, we need um, specialists, our pediatric intensivists, our pediatric gastroenterologists, hepatologists, our um, pediatric or anesthesiologists no, mm -hmm. with special training. We also need a, a pediatric uh, pulmonologist, cardiologists, uh, pwede minsan ENT or developmental pediatrician. So as the need arises, nagre-refer tayo. Um, and also, of course, a pediatric infectious disease uh, expert with training in transplantation. So, ang dami po talaga sa team na kailangan. Yeah, a pediatric hepatologist or gastroenterologist uh, cannot do it alone kasi it's very... Um, uh, complicated the uh, procedure, no? Yeah, mm -hmm. unlike other transplantation, uh, like kidney, mas mahirap yung liver po. <laughs> okay. So, at least there's hope for our patients, yes, no? That uh, uh, there's something we can do if ever we were able to catch them in time. Pero sabi nga natin dito sa newborn screening, ayaw natin dumating sa point na kailangan ng, ng liver transplantation. So, I'm going to ask Dr. Mitch now, how many of our patients uh, with galactosemia need liver transplant at this point? Because I'm hoping that others uh, do not need it because they were managed properly or early enough. Ilang bang nangangailangan ng liver transplant? Um, Dr. Ramenshit, uh, para sa ating mga um, galactosemia cases, um, so far, um, so far po, ay hindi naman po nila kinakailangan sa ngayon ng transplant. Ang um, mas ano po natin ngayon para sa ating mga um, disorders na sinescreen sa newborn screening, Ang concern po natin ay yung um, maple syrup urine disease. Um, ito po ay natalakay na natin sa um, mga nauna ng episodes po natin. At saka yung isa po na uh, may strong need tayo na magawa ang liver transplantation ay yung tyrosinemia type 1 din po. Okay. So itong pinag-uusapan nating liver transplant ay hindi lang talaga para sa galactosemia. Mm -hmm. Ang sinasabi natin ay meron talaga tayong mga pasyenteng nangangailangan. Mm -hmm. At umaasa kami na hindi kami, wala kaming pasyenteng marirefer sa iyo for liver transplant. <laughs> okay. Dahil napakahirap talaga yes, magkaroon ng isa. Uh -oh. Dr. Nervet? Yeah, I'd like also to add, no, there was a study, a pediatric acute liver uh, failure study no performed or done in 17 liver transplant centers no so among the um the uh, etiologies parang 9.7% or almost 10% of the etiology is accord uh, is uh, due to uh, metabolic liver disease and among that 10% 1.3% is due to galactosemia okay. Okay. so like uh, dr Mitch said na ang galactosemia naman talaga rare po na mag-transplant yeah. ka as long as na-address mo siya na yes. you avoid the galactose yes. in the diet. Yes. So, siguro pumapasok talaga yung team effort natin, ano, na we need our coordinators to organize the continuity clinic, you know, to, to monitor them. Uh, but definitely, at least we have the expertise to, to do this. Um, so, ma ma maganda naman ang buhay ng ating mga pasyente pagkatapos ma-transplant. They're okay. Yes. Oh. Opo. Excellent po yung kanyang um, outcome once transplanted. Excellent okay. outcome. Well, na napakaganda nitong ating conversation dahil hindi lang natin naintindihan na kailangan siya ng ilang pasyente natin ng may galactosemia, pero na-available siya sa Philippines. And we hope that we can have this available in all the big hospitals of the country. Uh, as a parting uh, message to our coordinators and audience, uh, maybe I'll start with Dr. Naveda. Ba ang gusto mong maalala okay. ng ating mga viewers? So, for galactosemia, actually, ang gusto kong maalala po ng ating viewers ay um, kailangan meron tayong prompt diagnosis and treatment, no? Kasi very excellent yung outcome ng galactosemia patients um, if we address it properly. 
and also if you see complications no you have to refer to your friendly specialist for example for us if there's jaundice um, hepatomegaly so that we can address these uh, uh, manifestations right away thank you dr mitch um, ako naman po ang um, nagpapasalamat sa ating mga um, newborn screening coordinators dahil um, sinisigurado nyo po na uh, itong ating mga newborn screening card ay natatanggap agad sa ating mga newborn screening centers uh, para malaman po natin kung ang isang uh, bata ay may a risk na uh, magkaroon ng hindi lamang po galactosemia, kundi yung iba pa pong mga um, kalagayan or condition na nandoon po sa ating newborn screening program. Um, again, um, gaya po ng sinabi ni Dr. Ranovet, mahalaga na masimulan po natin, ma ma-screen natin agad, ma-pick up po natin agad, para kung ganun ay masimulan po natin ang um, nararapat po na treatment para sa mga pasyenteng ito. Dahil ang pagsimula po agad ng treatment, uh, this would make sure na mas maganda ang magiging outcomes po nila. Thank you, Dr. Novet, uh, Dr. Mitch, for joining us today to discuss liver failure and the other complications related to galactosemia. We hope that our viewers gained a better understanding of this condition. If you or someone you know has galactosemia, please speak to your doctor about any concerns you may have. There are also resources available on the Philippine Newborn Screening website to help you manage this condition. And you don't have to do this alone. While galactosemia is a challenging condition, there is hope. With early diagnosis, proper treatment, and support, individuals with galactosemia can live healthy and fulfilling lives. To our virtual audience, please send us your comments, questions, or the list of topics that you want us to cover in our succeeding episodes. Email us at info at newbornscreening.ph or you may tweet us at newbornscreenph. And also include the hashtag, hashtag ENBSPH. Don't forget to answer this week's quiz on our ENBS mobile app. Earn your points and use them to redeem shop vouchers. Open dialogue drives innovation in newborn screening. It is our hope that through this video series, we expand knowledge sharing with greater reach empower our frontliners, improve connectivity with newborn screening coordinators, and most importantly, provide unparalleled service to every family. We can't wait to see you again the following week as we discuss the establishment of satellite clinics. This and more here in Newborn Screening in Focus. Nothing is more precious than seeing a child grow healthy and normal. Let's realize this through newborn screening. Newborn screening is a gift of life.